was talking on the phone. The lightning came down the phone line, entered my neck. It went through my spine, threw me up in the air, and there was this slight buzzing at the ear, and I felt myself pop out of the body. Then I felt myself float up to the ceiling, and the doctor and the nurse were in there, and he was looking at me, so she's gone, she's dead. And I was taken to hospital. Uh, doctors did anything they could to help me, but I was declared dead. I realized I was out of my body when I was suddenly looking at, at this light. Out of that light stepped the most amazing being I have ever been in the presence of. It was just total selflessness, uh, understanding, uh, kindness, all-consuming love, wonderful love. After a time and this light, uh, all of these people have to pay a return trip back. What they tell us is that the reason they chose to come back was not for themselves, because for themselves, they would rather have stayed with this presence of love. When they do return, incidentally, uh, then the story becomes very interesting from the point of view of human psychology because we find that these patients are profoundly changed, that they are imbued with a totally new value structure, that uh, whatever uh, in their lives before they had been chasing, whether it was uh, money or power or fame or any of these other things that people seek, uh, they say that after this experience, they're their value primarily is to love others, to seek loving relationships with their fellow human beings. And also they tell us that they have no more fear of death whatsoever. What's the matter? What, what's happened to him? Oh no. Oh no. I was shocked when I got that phone call. The one that nobody ever wants or ever really expects to get. There's just so many feelings that I really want to share. I, I just want to be there. Okay. Okay, well. We'll see you soon. Mom, I love you. My dad was fighting for every breath of life, and it didn't look very hopeful. Even though we lived 600 miles apart and only saw each other on holidays, at least we were on the same planet. And we could pick up the phone and say hello. The likelihood of losing all that seemed almost impossible to grasp. Dear Dad, I'm so sorry to hear about what you're going through. I know you're rugged, but you gave us a good scare. I'm writing you this letter because I don't know if I'll ever see you again, yet I have so much I want to say. Dad, do you remember several years ago when I was still grieving over the death of Suzanne? 
I found a great deal of comfort in some books I was reading about dying. It was at that time that I met a doctor of psychiatry, a researcher named Dr. Raymond Moody. I'm sending a copy of a book that he wrote, which was a great deal of help to me then. Dr. Moody has observed a pattern that occurs in people the world over, regardless of their culture or religion. As a matter of fact, the prior religious beliefs or background of the person doesn't seem to have much to do with whether or not they have an experience and even the content of the experience. Mm -hmm. uh, we've even had people who say that prior to their experience they were atheists or agnostics mm -hmm. who have very beautiful and full-blown near-death experiences. Really? And do they remain atheist and agnostic? Not at all. Once they come back, mm. they tell us that they're totally transformed and they have no more doubt whatsoever that there is a God and that there is a life after death. It's about his research on the stories of people who have approached death, many of whom actually had the experience of dying and then were revived and lived to tell about it. What happened is I felt like I'd been hit by a train. But what had happened was, I was talking on the phone, holding the telephone like this. The lightning came down the phone line, entered my neck. It went through my spine, threw me up in the air. As it threw me in the air, it knocked me out of my shoes and welded the nails and the heels of my shoes to the nails in the floor, which is how I was grounded and I didn't explode. Before I shot myself, I measured like we did in CPR to find where the heart was. And that's where I just took the, the barrel and put it up against my chest and pulled the trigger. I had not responded to treatment. I was getting worse. And the doctor had come to see Anne. At this point, he says, I, I've lost her. She's gone. And I thought, well, who's he talking about? But just before this, I had been in terrible pain. I was just hurting so bad, I wanted to get away from it. Fifteen minutes before I was to be picked up by a jeep, uh, I was discovered to have a temperature of 106 and a half. And instead of waiting for the jeep, the captain in charge of the ward sent me over to x-ray. And the last thing I remember was the captain in charge of the x-ray asking him. I thought I could send up long enough for them to get a picture of my chest. And I remember hearing that x-ray making that peculiar whirring sound and then a click and I'm told that I collapsed in a heap. This wasn't a typical bee sting because I quickly realized uh, that there was a problem. And I tried to telephone someone for help. The, uh, the rest of the ranger station was about three miles in and I tried to telephone my boss to, to send some help. And I fell and went unconscious. And luckily, from what I understand, he drove through, my boss drove through a little while later and noticed that I, I normally just waved to him as he came by and I was lying down on the floor and he called the ambulance. I was a dissident in Soviet Union and I had an invitation from United States uh, in 1975 I received this invitation in 1976, I was given the exit visa, and I was leaving for uh, New York that day, and I was coming to take uh, my passport, and I was ready to fly. My family was already in airport waiting for me. At that time, on sidewalk, I was here, moved over or run over by car. Um, it was fabricated by KGB. They wanted to kill me and not to let me go. And I was taken to hospital. Uh, doctors did anything they could to help me, but I was declared dead.